how is everyone today? Ah, how is everyone today? There's I am here. Oh, he spies at classes, and let me tell you, it was hard to make. And I think it will not have the information density that I would really want, because all of them uh, have this wonderful, um, like. All of these parasites have this wonderful ecology that I'm not sure I'm able to truly capture. It's all... I don't know. But hey, here we are and here we're going to talk about fish parasites. I did prepare, I did prepare, I prepare the parasites of fish. And episodes of uh, fish parasites. Oh boy, that that was a night. I am uh, feeling drained and um, preparing, preparing for the special. Let me tell you, going to be hard. Going to be, uh, going to be the hard. I mean, it's not exactly like a. I could play jackpot. We could play jackpot. I'm still trying. I'm still trying to get uh, the things for the. Um, to, to make it fit because 24 hours um <laughs> it's hard it's hard let me tell you it's hard <laughs> it's really hard maybe i could make it monday or tuesday and can we quit but uh if it's the next tuesday technically it wouldn't hit anything important this beside this coliseum but after that I'm still, I'm still having this, the schedules things because I really want, really want to make it and to make it good, to make it good. I really want to because everyone deserves like the best that I can give. However, now is not the time for that. Now is the time for something else. The time for. Uh, uh, no, no, not that, not that, not that, not that yet, none of that yet, none of that yet. It's the time for the special. And oh boy, boy, oh boy, oh madre! It will be relatively short, I think. I have only like 21 slides, but uh, we are going to, you know, go at least two minutes per slide. So it's going to be an extremely short stream. However, we can still make it interesting. We can still make it extremely interesting. So, 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 so. To answer uh, the question about what would you expect if you were saying that the fish was parasitized, we need to ask, what is a parasite? Interesting question. And to answer that, we will uh, have to say that a parasite is an organism that lives in or another species. Uh, or another or in or uh, in or on another organism of another species. Yeah, of a different species. Let's say a different species. Of a different species. The host. And it benefits from its nutrients at the other's expenses without immediately killing it because otherwise that would be called predation. It is distinct from com uh, commensalism and mutualism. Very true. Like very, very, very true. Uh, because commensalism, uh, symbiosis, also called mutualism, comes as a benefit for as the benefit of both of, of the organism. The best example would be lichens. Lichens. And how they show that lichens are indeed among the best choice when it comes to this kind of studies. Well, the answer is right. Just to have them. Lichen are a pioneer species. Here, we have a mycelium. Right there. You have a mycelium right there. That is able to resist des desiccation and give water. Very, very important. But 
What is the other associate? Well, it's either cyanobacteria or it's an algae, which uh, gives the like its color. It usually gives its color. It can be protesting. The most important is that it gives more photosynthesis. So, out of that, the lichen, like the mycelium, gives H2O for photosynthesis, which requires water and carbon dioxide and light. And in exchange for giving such a house, the algae or whatever provides glucose. and the inhabitants and usually it's like you live on your you live on the skin you live in the intestines you live in um, any mucu any um, how to say mucosal uh, you, li you live in any surfaces and you do nothing you just you just vibe you, you vibe and you eat but you it doesn't come at the expense of the other organism like it doesn't come at a problem it doesn't become a problem for the other organism it can however become a problem Usually the distance between commensalism and parasitism is uh, a tight, very tight balance. Which is why some species in your intestine that uh, can be considered to be com fully commensal, like for example E. coli, could, uh, or other species, like Clostridium difficile, could become very well become harmful and pathogenic, or rather parasitic in that case, if we're, if we're ready to talk about that, uh, are we to be considered Parasitic, in the case where, well, they are, in the case where they, they belong that when the host is either weakened, the immune system of the host is weakened, because usually it's what keeps the parasites in check, or if uh, there is another virus that comes to create a, a, genetic, muta create a genetic mutation, such gene insertion, that uh, would then make the, uh, the, the specific strain uh, pathogenic and the best example is candida species when the organism is well when the female organism is uh, weakened it can very so very much suffer from candidosis and it's never fun because uh, mycelium inf uh, mycelium infections are never fun I mean you would know I would know another thing that I would really really like to insist upon is that uh, there will be graphic content, even though it's fish, uh, there will be graphic content there. And uh, it, it will... It's better, it's better if the one talks about it uh, in, in the comments. Uh, it's better if the one who... Is, please don't report me. That, that's, that'd be nice, please do not report me. I would really, really like you to not report me. It would be a blessing. And, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's about it. That's uh, that's uh, that's about it. Um, now, I will not go too far uh, into the biology of these beauties. Uh, the main reason is that they will have uh, their own dedicated episode down in the pipeline uh, because they are part of life. So we are going to talk about them. Uh, we are absolutely going to talk about them uh, and we are going to do uh, some kind of cataloging uh, from a fish point of view uh, why well because it's a fish episode it's a special episode for the parasite of fish it's more so that you know that they exist uh, they're very much present they are very much a threat uh, there is a lot of economical aspects and can result in human diseases uh, when they appear 
uh, when we are there. Uh, for example, nematodes. Uh, nematodes are very much well known uh, for, for example, with badly, uh, badly cooled, uh, with uh, problems of in the handling of preparation of fish, uh, raw fish, for example, full of parasites. Uh, any nematodes. But it can also comes at the it also comes at the expense of a fish itself, which affects the fishing industry. And as you you've heard, it's an industry. It's a whole pan of the economy. It's a whole pan of the economy that those parasites can and will affect, especially for very uh, important species um, like food produce. Hello, hello, Ege. But yeah, it's very important. Um, it's very important in the case that when the fish are infected, they will be either co either considered unfit for consumption, or they will uh, produce. They will have less. Like th there's going to be like less produce at first. There's going to be less produce for our first consideration because the fish is weakened, and also the produce will be of lesser quality. So knowing uh, how to prevent fish from getting these parasites has been and it continues to be a very important consideration for a lot of governments and academics alike. Uh, alike. But how are you again? How are you? And here we are going to uh, for a moment. We are mainly going to talk, uh, for this episode, we are going to talk about ectoparasites. I mean, we are going to talk about some endoparasites too. Which will mostly be ectoparasites. Because I tried, I genuinely tried to do an episode about um, the bacteria and viruses. Like the, the diseases that the fish could, ca could catch. That's way too much. Uh, from viruses that affect the brain of salmons. To bacteria that literally, like eat the flesh of the fish, there's way too much fish diseases for, for me to basically apply. And even those few examples of parasitism... Yeah, yeah, they, they will occupy my time. They, uh, the research was not easy. The research was not easy to comply. Because there is, like... There is, like, when you see them, you know that they are parasites of fish, but there's no real link between them. So it's really hard to jump between all those taxa. I, you basically need to be in the know or to search really, really far and wide. To search really for, for, for the information. Like it's not as easily available as all the information that I had before. Also, uh, ni very nice, very nice to know. Very nice to know that you, you do. Uh, can we overcook the parasite fish uh, to make it edible? You don't need to overcook. You need to overcook. If, if, if like, for example, uh, uh, nematodes with the nematodes, like you can just cook the fish. Like cook the fish, good. Like you know, like you would do chicken. Like as long as it's fully cooked, the parasite is dead. But uh, I'm not really going to go over the consideration of uh, human consumption. It's more that the su the subject is really well researched. It's it's really well researched mainly because of economi the economical consequences of uh, fish parasitism. And you see that there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of families, there's a lot of uh, different uh, living, bo uh, living uh, creatures that uh, have been uh, going at it, parasitizing fishes. And uh, literally, like, we go for lampreys, chobelon, uh, I don't remember what, what those are. Like, those are pretty much protists. Those are protists. We have isopods, crustaceans. I think all of those are crustaceans. Yeah, I think all of those are crustaceans right there. And here, here it's... This one is a flatworm. This one is... I think it's a tongue worm, which is a crustacean. If, if this is a tongue worm, which, which, uh, this one could be a crustacean. Uh, nematodes, so round worms. Cestodes, flat they're, they're part of flat worms. They're like, um, you know, like um, tenia. They're like the tenia. Uh, of course, there's going to be, I think it's the lice. 
Laos. And this is a Gnidarian. This is very interesting because this is a highly specialized living being uh, that is like a cousin from uh, cousin from jellyfish, a cousin from jellyfish. But those uh, have completely abandoned uh, the fact of being animals. They're still animals. Uh, some of them are completely monocellular. Like they have reverted to being monocellular, or they can be very few cells, one cells or very few cells, and they've uh, have they have had a lot of adaptations uh, towards parasitism. So much so that uh, I, I will I, I will talk a bit a bit more about about them. I will talk a bit more about them later, because uh, we're going to get them. Uh, we're going to get them, and uh, first all uh, first order of business uh, will be vertebrates. With lampreys, as you've seen in the previous parasite uh, parasite classes about uh, chordates, the first, the first, I think it's the first one about chordates. Lampreys are chordates. Uh, they they are considered. I think they are considered like the first vertebrates. Can jellyfish? Uh, can jellyfish? Yes, yes, they can. They can indeed. They are parasites for every single living being, like for every single animal that I can think of. If even every single living being, there will be a parasite for that. There will be like a kind of parasite for that. But yeah, uh, jellyfish can be uh, parasit uh, parasit uh, parasitized. They can be infested, including by their own, including by Mixozoian, which are the, the cousins. And uh, I consider every single disease to be parasites. Every single disease is technically a parasite because it's a living being that is a living. Like we go back to the definition of a parasite, and with the definition of a parasite comes that it's an organism that lives in or on another organism of a different species and benefits from its nutrients at the other's expense. The, without immediately killing it, killing it is not the true objective. Uh, object, uh, like it's not the true objective. Here we go um, with the lamprey. So the lamprey is the, the modus operandi of the lamprey is pretty pretty simple. Uh, so is like the life cycle of the lamprey. Lamprey, classic chordate, it has a larva. The larva is a filter feeder. Then it becomes an adult. The adult, uh, as you can see, has uh, it's a jo it's a jollyish fish. So it it has this little sucker. This little sucker can attach itself to a fish. Uh, will then use its tongue and uh, its teeth in order to uh, cut a little hole where. It where it will feed on the mucus, uh, the blood, uh, the other tissues that, uh, that, that are directly within the hole. Yeah. It's nice, right? And that's the life cycle of lampreys. After a while, they detach. After a while, they detach when we, when we feel like we, we, we don't need to anymore. Usually, it's when they are detached by themselves. Usually, it works like that. Oh, yeah. I forgot about forgot about uh, another one. Another parasite uh, that is also a fish. Cookie cutter shark. Yeah. Uh, this is on a this is a this is a yellowfin tuna. You, you can see the yellowfin right there. Hello Sagittarius. No, you're not late. You're not late. Come on. Yeah, the cavity fin. Oh dang. I bet it's better. I mean, those are like cookie cutter sharks. Yeah, they are literally cookie cutter sharks. But yeah, they, they are literally cookie cutter sharks. So they, they use they use their little teeth, they use their little row teeth to cut uh to cut a really round hole. Uh, and this is this is a herring, I think. This is a herring. Like this is an adult herring, and you see uh, healed bites, partially healed bites, and a fresh bite. So they can go, they can come pretty often uh, for the fish. It does come uh, with some amount of stress. Because as, as you can see, they really go for it. They really go for it. And there, there has been like, yes, indeed, they have they, they have caused uh, troubles on submarines. So much so that they at first were thought to be Soviet attacks. Uh, they, they were thought uh, to be attacks, but no, they, they were literally fish. They were literally fish. And um, yeah. Speaking of which, uh, like, is this just a piece of trivia, but, um... 
By doing a lot of by doing research on fish, I didn't expect to see so much research on dead bodies. Like I've seen uh, quite a few dead bodies that were devoured by fish. And let me tell you, it's um, it's a uh, oh boy, it's like how to say. Those dead bodies, like, uh, have you seen like the zombie movies from like the 80s? Yeah, they kind of look like they kind of look like that. So the practical effects were like, pretty nice. Like, the fish apparently do not like to eat the eyes. So the eyes stained the uh, the eyes stained the skull, and uh, since the, the the person that were found were relatively fresh, um, like the eyes didn't decompose, and like like the, the, the way the bites are the, the way the bites are represented, they they don't eat they usually don't eat the hair, like the scalp, they don't eat the eyes, like I seen that uh, some even avoided the nose, like even avoided the nose. Like the, the lips are there, the extremities. Like I've seen, like I've seen, uh, I've seen a corpse being completely skeletonized. Like it was completely skeletonized except for the hand, the feet, and the scalp and the eyes. But otherwise, it, it was a complete skeleton. It was weird. It was weird doing doing research for that because I was doing research on Candidu. Candidu, who is a little species of um, who is a little species of catfishes. So there's a lot of uh, which is in the Amazon. So I was doing research on catfishes in the Amazon. Turns out a lot of people do drown in the Amazon. Like a lot of people do drown. Uh, so much so that uh, we, they had images. They had readily av available images and corpses. Um, and like I said, like I said before, like I put it before. <laughs> it was a warning for graphic content with a with an. Yeah, I get it. But yeah, uh, we'll go back to Candiru. Like, catfishes, like, those bites you would think would be caused by piranhas? No, 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 no. They were caused by catfishes. And as, as it turns out, like, electric kills are found in the Amazon catfish. They are both finding a dead body. I mean, I don't want to, I, I don't want to post photos because it, it's against TOS for absolutely everything. But I do know the paper. I can cite the. I can. If you are really, really curious, I can cite the paper. <laughs> the RTX <laughs> cannot. <laughs> but yeah, I, I can cite the paper. I think it's. Um. Uh, I, I don't remember the title anymore. I don't think that I've seen the paper. Like, uh, no, I've seen the paper. I, I've seen the paper, but I didn't download the paper because I don't want to be seen with that in my in my computer. But yeah, it's it's, uh, it's capable to be found in Sci-Hub, and apparently catfish is surprisingly ravenous, surprisingly surprisingly ravenous, and including the candy So the candy uh, what it does uh, as a parasite is that it goes inside the gills of a, it goes inside the gill of a fish. It used a little barb right there. My brother goes to a medicine university and he sent me a picture of a corpse uh, he was studying in class. It looks like a mummy. Yeah, because they, re they tend to reuse them. They tend to reuse them. Also, the embalming. But they, uh, you, you like, I, it was the first time that I seen like a body being skeletonized like that. And more like that. It, it's more like the feet. Like, like you know, the, the feet were completely bloated by the water. It's all over the hands. But now I need to reveal this information. Um, I like they, they, the paper didn't just say uh, subject blah 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 and then uh, the consequences. No, they, they went into the whole detail about the death. They went into the whole detail about the death of a person. Whoever, were, no, no, not whoever, were, like the age. No, it's like like cooked chicken. Dang, <laughs> nice. But yeah, but uh, they were with the age and the personal story and the personal story. So the person that was skeletonized was a pregnant was a pregnant uh, was a pregnant uh, sixteen years old from Brazil. Apparently, uh, the guy uh, the, the, the guy. Didn't accept the child because he was already married, so it was an extra conjugal. She was 16 years old, uh, already, already bad. 
and uh, she did the delete herself. Let's carry her areas of expertise. And uh, she did the delete herself in the Amazon. 16 hours later, I think it was 48 hours later, she was found. And the only thing, she was found and the skeleton, as a skeleton, she was skeletonized. And here's the thing. Uh, the cartilage intact. Cartilage intact. The extremities, so it really began at the hand, at the wrist. The hand? No. No, it, it wasn't eaten. It wasn't even beaten. The feet? Starting at the ankle? Wasn't even beaten. W wasn't. The face was completely skeletonized except for the eyes. And she still has her scalp. And yeah, she, she was pregnant too, so... Um, but like she, she was a skeleton, so you, you couldn't see that. You can't see how pregnant... If a skeleton would be pregnant, but... Imagine you find that! Like, those, those fish in 48 hours did... Wowie! But they didn't eat the eyes, that's... that's that is weird, like, they, they don't eat the eyes and they don't penetrate to the brain. And... That is weird. But yeah, they, they tend to eat the face in, pri in priority. Now that, now, that I, now, now that I think about it, like these, these Amazon fishes tend to eat the face in priority. Because uh, there was another picture of a 16 years old. Uh, there was a picture of a 16 year old uh, boy who uh, wanted, uh, as a challenge, to cross the Amazon uh, by swimming, got swept by the current, was found 8 hours later. Um, found eight, eight hours later and no, no face, no face anymore. Uh, bit on the shoulder, like it's like he was attacked by acid. Do you think he, she has a death beat? And so she can retain her sense of self. I don't know. So she can retain her sense of self. I, I don't know. I don't know, my dude. But yeah, it has not, but yeah, it was all catfishes, and this this your boy, this your boy is a catfish too, the Kandilu catfish, and uh, goes inside, uh, use the barbs in order to make the fish bleed, feeds on his feed on his blood. Uh, that, that's as simple as that. And yeah, I do know that there's uh, like like we said before, there were rumors about attacks on humans. But nah, no, it's not going to go inside of your penis. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Uh, so, I think that we can go into invertebrates now, uh, as far as sites of fish. And we will begin with the most well-known, so much well-known, the, the most well-known example. So much, so much so, that it is literally the photo for parasitism. It is very, it is the Wikipedia photo. And it's one of the most special cases there is, however. We, we go with crustaceans. And uh, Simophora exiga. So, it is a little, a little, little exopod. It is a little uh, isopod. Is that a parasite on the right? Is it also a fish? Uh, just got here. Yes, uh, this is Candido species. This is Candido species. You just, you just want that? Thank you, because I was talking about the horrible, like the horrible thing that catfishes did to cadavers in the Amazon, uh, because I found a lot of photos of dead people uh, by doing research for this episode. <laughs> but yeah, like it's the most well-known example, of course. Also, it's literally one of the photos that I used uh, for for the for for, for the episode. It is one of the photos that I used. So it's a little isopod. Simosa exiga is a little isopod that swims, detects the fish, swims up to the fish, and um, it goes through a gill. So it's, it analyzes its, its, uh, it analyze its environment, goes through a gill, gets inside of a mouth. Afterwards, it will cut open the tongue, just, just a little cut, to feed on its blood. But it also has the posterior claws, the three posterior claws, and this one too, and this part too. They will uh, literally strangle the. They will literally strangle the tongue. 
the more the parasite will grow. The tongue in Laos? Yes, it is. It is. I mean, it's not literally eating the tongue because it, it's only like the thing that it does is that it uh, it doesn't eat the tongue. It uh, muti it uh, cuts the tongue open uh, to get the blood. So the tongue is like it is like hurt. It is wounded, but not to a point. It, it's just bleeding on the fluids. But here's the thing: as much as it grows, it, it uh, its claws gets uh, stronger and stronger to strangle off the tongue and the blood flow of the tongue itself. The tongue will t uh, fall out on its own by dying. Uh, you know, literally what we do to uh, the, the testicles of veals or the tails of uh, sheep, for example. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's what it does. And then it, it has a unique connection that will allow itself to connect to the back of the tongue and to be completely used seamlessly by, by the fish. In other words, it will only be ever interested in the mucus. It is not interested in the food of the fish itself. It is not interested in what comes inside of the mouth, just on the mucus that is inside of the mouth of a fish. In, it is pretty weird because it's one of the it's the only recorded paras parasite that will gradually replace the organ that it parasitizes, and then completely change the way that it eats and interacts with its host. To a point, but yeah, the fish is not handicapped. And that's how you get pictures like that, yeah. Also, the fish, the fish lives perfectly normally afterwards. I mean, I'm sure that it's not exactly happy to have had this experience, but hey, it has a tongue. Even though the tongue can speak for itself. Uh, however, isopods don't have... They don't have to be as internal and subtle. <laughs> With the lice. We all now sing Hello! Hello! <laughs> like that. I mean, yeah, it's it's also my photo. Uh, I think that I, yeah, I think that the, the like the, the thumbnail of the episode. Yeah, it's like that. Also, Riser, to to ask yourself, uh, this little fish, this little fish right there, uh, goes inside the gills of our fish uh, inside of the Amazon. It's the candiru, you know, it's the the, the, the penis the penis fish. The, the fish that goes inside the penis. I mean, according to the rumors that I do not trust, that I do not, uh, that I do not trust at all, goes inside the gel, uh, use its barbs because it, it has, it has little bar. You see there? Oh no, I, I can't. Why, why can't I show it? I mean, properties. Yes, I would like to capture, capture the mouse, please. Thank you. So you see there? It has a little spike. This little spike right there. These little spikes are here to hurt the fish, to make it bleed, and it drinks the blood. That's how it does. But when we go back, uh, yeah, when you go, like, I do not believe, I do not believe that this is capable of crawling up on a reef uh, in order to to do what it does. I don't believe that it's capable of doing that, especially since the legends, according to the legends, the thing could like jumped. Like jumped into a penis. It's not possible. It's not physically possible. I mean, not with not with its anatomy, not with its anatomy. But yeah, you don't need to be ex exactly inside of a fish in order to parasitize it. And uh, that's exactly another species of louse called uh, Anilocla capensis. Fixes itself on the fish and hey, gets a ride, cut free, and it's the mucus because it's mostly what it's interested in. Problem being, well. Uh, it is the mucus and the slime, which is important for the for the for the how does it say, to the, for the, for the health of the fish skin. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a bit of a problem for the fish, but it's really uncomfortable. We also have uh, fish lice, which is uh, yet another kind of species uh, found in like saltwater and freshwater fish. It is really small. Like this is a really small fish. This is a real small fish, so it is really, really small. Uh, feeds on blood, mucus, other materials. It uh, it fixes itself. It uh, fixes itself, but uh, it's more interesting to see the, the counterpart, which is the sea lice. So the, the sea lice does uh, about the same. It does about the same. Um, what it does is that it causes physical and enzymatic damage on the invested region. So it fixes itself on the fish. It digests, uh, it digests the, the, the scale of the fish 
it bites, so it does chemical and physical damage. It does something beneficial the, when it wouldn't be symbiosis and parasitism. Uh, if it does something uh, beneficial, but won't... Ah, you, you're looking for another question. You're looking for another question, and don't worry, this is the... I know that why you asked this question is because you haven't seen the slide. So I'm going to slow, to show the slides, the slide again. So, what is a parasite? Well, you see that you, you, you know that the parasite comes at the expense of the other, of the other. Without immediately killing it, otherwise it would be predatory, it would be a bigger predator. Symbiosis comes as the benefits of, of both of the organisms, and I went with the example of lichen, with the lichen uh, having a mushroom being a structure of the lichen, transporting water and protecting, protecting the, the photosynthesis, and then uh, the photosynthesis organism, uh, like it can be a cyanobacteria, it can be a protist, it can be like an algae. It gives you it gives glucose and the organic material and that's that's all best for me. Got, uh, it's one of the best in your system was. Afterwards, uh, there is commercialism. It's just uh, you live there and I live here. So it's alright. Uh, I live inside of your asshole. Uh, it, it's all good. It's all good brother. Uh, however, it's the music is a bit loud. Oh yeah, yeah, it's really loud. It is i i I'm sorry, I'm sorry about the mixing of the music. Um, yeah, I, I prefer I prefer to stay with Saya only. <laughs> I prefer with, to stay with Saya only. Um, commensalism comes from uh, cohabitation, and it's just cohabitation. Like uh, Im imagine, like this is an organism that lives on your skin, it lives on your eyelid, it lives it lives in your intestines. It does its thing. You do your, you do your thing. Like it takes a bit of nutrition, but it's not going to be like it's not going to hurt you. Like it's not going to hurt you for the moment. Because it's very possible that it will hurt you uh, come a certain occasion. Hey, Vitua Sauce! Go over right, go right here! <laughs> I am right in front of your home and you apparently have locked the door. Or have you? Oh, have you? Oh, no, no, not this one. Oh, I'm sorry. You have apparently locked the door. Or... Have you? <laughs> uh, I hope that the episode will not be destroyed. Um, also, very important with commensalism. Uh, when uh, the balance of power is... Well, when it, the balance of power is, uh, how to say, destabilized. When a balance of power is destabilized, for example, when your immune system is compromised, a common cell organism can become a parasite. Which is the case with most mushroom species like, that live with us. For example, Aspergillus species, Candida species. Um, they do that. They do what they can. They, they do what they can to live. And if there's an open space to grow and have nutrients in, well, don't mind them. They're going to do it. No hesitation. That's how life works. But yeah, uh, we go with sea lice, and uh, sea lice just create lesion. Uh, they create lesion, le lesions and uh, chronic stress, which is a problem uh, for the fish because it affects the quality of the meat. Uh, a lot of stress does affect the quality of the meat, which is why it's very important uh, to know how sea lice uh, lives, because otherwise it's not going to be good. One way to kill sea lice uh, is, or any any lice in particular is to change the salinity of their environment uh, however that can also kill the fish I mean of course that can kill the fish but for species like salmon for species li like salmon uh, they very much like they very much can because you know since salmons are migratory animals they live in a they are born in a river spend most of their life in the sea come back to the uh, comes back to the to the river in order to once again reproduce well, since salmon are mi migratory uh, fishes, they can and they will shed uh, sea lice when they come back. Because th that's what they do. That's just what they do. Uh, we have also gill lice. And as you've seen, like, gill lice 
They're pretty, pretty bad. Like, they live in, your, they live in jails and they are very small. Supremely small. And very weird. It is still a crustacean. All of what I've shown for a moment. All of those. All crustaceans. This is, this is a crustacean too. And I haven't even t and I haven't even shown you like a, a, a tongue worm. Tongue worm is a crustacean too. It's very much a, a crustacean. But yeah, uh, this is the exact I think. I think this is the uh, the the egg the, the little exact. But yeah, it doesn't look like crab, huh? And uh, they're, they're weird. Uh, copy pods are usually very weird. Uh, Hey, copy pods! Uh, I know, I know from the uh, MFP world building project. Uh, the mystery flesh pits, mystery, Fle uh, mystery flesh pits. Yeah, they're pretty good. They're, they're pretty cool. Let me see what they look like in the mystery flesh pit thing. Copy pods. Oh yeah, yeah, they're really weird in the mystery flesh pit. Like they look a lot more like. They look a lot more uh, like crustaceans than a lot of copepods actually do, but they do have this uh, this weird uh, hand like they can have this weird hand like structures. So I find it really inventive that uh, they use copepods for mystery flesh pits, and I, and I really 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 like this. I really like the mystery flesh pit, except for maybe for the moment where. Um, it shows like more consciousness from from the flesh pit itself, but uh, in in terms of spec uh, of spec evolution, the mystery flesh pit is really interesting. But yeah, they, they can they can become really weird. Uh, copy pod literally means like one one leg, one foot. So yeah, they're super weird, super super weird. Uh, afterwards, uh, we we'll go with platelets. Uh, well, the, the species is degenesin, but platelets literally means flatworms. Uh, they are intestinals. Uh, they are intestinal parasites, and their first host is usually a mollusk. So what's going to happen is that the fish eats a snail. The snail has a parasite inside of them, and the parasite is going to be to be released. It's going to be released uh, inside of the gastrointestinal tract. The, uh, the parasite, the degenerian, is going to make their eggs. They're going to make their eggs, uh, and the, sh the fish will shit out the egg. And that's how that's how platformers do. Degenerian, <laughs> no degenerian, degenerians. And uh, like I said before, uh, there's also. Uh, those are not platyworms. Those are flatworms. Flatworms are very distinct from crustaceans. We have exited the crustaceans, and uh, flatworms. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them that uh, that do the thing. However, uh, I am going to show you something very weird. Mixozoans. Mixozoans uh, have not appeared in the Knidarian episode, which is, uh, to my great regret, uh, they have not appeared in the Knidarian episode, because. They are weird and kind of, kind of, kind of say, how to say, like they have appeared like briefly, briefly. I might give them their own episode because they are fascinating but not that well known. What are mixed ones? They are cousins of jellyfish. They are cousins of jellyfish, and what they do is really weird because what they evolved into is having one. Or like, like they have very few amount of cells. Sometimes even only one. Sometimes even only one. And they infest the fish, the inside. Most of them are completely parasites, and they have adapted to parasitism in a way that is extremely, extremely impressive. Like. The, we know that they have reverted from free uh, from free floating organisms to paras to parasites. Like they were jellyfishes before, they were, they were pretty big. Like ancestors have apparently in the genome been pretty, you know, actual jellyfish. They became that. They became that completely unicellular, or sometimes not. Oh, thank you, hell, thank you, Olympia. 
Thank you, thank you for the... Wait. Is that my... Is that on my YouTube? Dang! I, 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 like, I, I'm, 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 it never happened. I've never seen someone subscribe on my, on, on my YouTube before, like, in, in <laughs> live. Dang! Okay, thank you, thank you so much. I didn't know that this would happen. <laughs> not many, not many votes are actually. Votes are supposed to be like, you know, like, uh, you know, I have, I have a little thing. I have a little thing when, when it comes to my. I don't know. Oh, it's weird. Oh, it's weird. But yeah, 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 yeah. So mix those ones. Mix those ones uh, have adapted very, very much to a parasite, to a parasite uh, living, con to a parasite living condition. So much so that they have pruned their genome. They have pruned their genetic sequences so much that they are among the animals that have the lowest amount, uh, li like the, the smallest genomes. They are among the animals that have the smallest genomes. Or influence grows, indeed. One hatching at a time. And usually fish are not even the final uh, the final host. So I'm going to um, okay. So I need I need I need to to go uh, to another round of that. Do another round of that. Let me show you. Yeah, this this usually okay. So parasites have a life cycle. They have a life cycle. The objective of a parasite is to up, is to uphold to this life cycle. You have. A sexually competitive organism, or like a reproductively competitive organism. We're going to call it A, because it's an adult. It's the adult form. It's going to go in organism... Like I'm going to call it A, but big A. In organism... Like it's going to live in organism C. Organism B. In order to reproduce. To feed and reproduce. The eggs might, like the eggs might come to uh, be absorbed by another organism, uh, by another organism B. Like it, it can, like you know, it can come back like that. It can come back like that. So this this life cycle, where A parasitizes B, and then there's a life cycle, or maybe there's you know maybe there's a, an amount of free life, is when you have B as the definitive organism. But we can have intermediate organism in a life cycle. So you have, for example, A as a larva, you have an organism B, is going to house A as a larva. The strategy of A, of parasite A, is to be is to have B being eaten or B shitting out A. So that A can go in organism C and parasitize it. In organism C, A is going to become like in C, A is going to become the adult form. That can continue the cycle. Like that can shit out an egg of A or you know whatever or a larval form of A that will attach to B. And then you have a, and then you have a cycle with B as uh, like like I'm going to define reproduction here like uh, this reproduction here. So B is going to be like an intermediate organism. It's going to be an inter intermediate uh, host. I'm sorry, uh, reading writing with the mouth is bad. And this is the definite host. This is the definitive host. Uh, this is the the primary host. And it can be like the life cycle can also go for another way. I can go with, I'm going to go with uh, the example that I know the best. I'm going to go with the example that I know the best. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Very, sorry. very, very sorry. Let's go, 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 let's
It's going to be it's really simp to, to be simple. We have the tick eggs. The egg becomes a larval form of the tick. The tick needs to have a meal. It needs to, in order for the tick to change its life cycle, to change its level, it's going to have to need to have a meal. And because uh, it is way easier to attack soft skin because it's so small, it's going to attack small organisms. So like mouse or frogs, sometimes fish. It's going to have its first it's going to have its first meal. Like I'm going to like it's going to have its first meal in like first organism then it's going to shed and it's going to it's going to grow and molt and become a nymph this nymph is going to have to eat on a bigger organism because it, 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 it needs more blood it needs more blood it's going to have another organism to become an adult To become an adult. And then it's going to have its third meal. And after the third meal, reproduction. The third meal is there for reproduction. And that's how a tick goes. And a tick can live, like a tick can wait for years. Ticks are, uh, tick are terrifying of efficiency when it comes to, parasit to parasitism. But yeah. So that means that the tick in its lifetime will have three hosts. It will have three hosts. And here, the, defi the definitive host for the mix of the one, for the, for mix the mix of the one, trup, are F worms, annelids, so uh, worms with rings. That's how they work. Like worms are going to be parasitized, and the mixospores will make them. The, will make the vats. And there we go. We have we have a thingy. We have a thingy magingy. I don't know which one is the adult. <laughs> I don't know if it's either that or that which is the adult. I don't. I don't. I don't remember. Uh, but now we're going to go towards the part that is a bit more, uh, like, completely more gore. Um, would, you, would you still love me if I was not a worm? I mean, that, that's a true question, though. C come on, I am a worm. Would you still love me if I wasn't a worm? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, come on. I, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know who we are. I know who we are. And uh, now, now, now we're going to go uh, to a part where we're going to have some blood. So if you are if you are queasy, get the fuck out. Nematodes, uh, so called uh, for like the most well-known species is Anisakis, because it provokes a lot of problems for humans uh, following the consumption of raw fish, like sushis, for example. Some people have died from that, like, uh, actually have been very, very ill from that. Like, nematodes are roundworms. Nematodes are roundworms, they have a pretty good ecology. Uh, they, have pretty, they have a pretty cool ecology. I still love you if you weren't a worm. Oh, that's tough. Ah, <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You're just here for my elongated bodies, for my, for my beautiful little, for my little beautiful protector of flesh, for my feelers. <laughs> you, you, you're using me, you're using me for. Even if you can't see me, even if I'm still in the brain, you're still using me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Anisakis, and uh, they can kiss themselves. And there was a cell at work episode about this thing. Yes! 
sometimes I just wonder how some things can live with this many parasites on them. Ask yourself this question. <laughs> Usually they don't live well. Usually they don't really live well, but they they've adapted. Like it, it do, I think that it does cause it does cause stress. It is not really a consideration for farm fish, uh, for farmed fish, um, but it it is a true consideration for like actual fished fish, you know, uh, wild fish. But uh, yeah, there's a there's a ton of them, and uh, it's not even the worst because uh, there's the swim bladder worm. The swim bladder worm is also a nematode. And uh, it is found within the swim bladders, and I do not know how the fish can keep itself together with a swim bladder like that, with a, f a swim bladder so full of worm. Life finds a way? Yeah, pretty much. Why are they black, by the way? Because nematodes are usually completely transparent. They are black because they drank so, so much blood. That, that's the answer. They drank, they, they literally drink the blood, and they, they are completely bloated from the blood that they drank. Completely bloated. Absolutely bloated. And then we have uh, we have some like you know like unicellular some uh, unicellular organisms that are that have that causes problem that cause problem for, for fishes. Uh yeah, this very amoebic uh, gel disease and you see the, the you see the gels uh, that separates like that. Uh, Imagine that in your bladder. I mean, the swim bladder is not, exa is not exactly the same, but yeah, imagine that. Yeah, no, it must be writhing a lot. It must be writhing a lot, like, really. Like, just imagine this mass. Just is imagine this mass. At least it's like, it's for me it's less, um, I mean, it's, this is a very egregious example, but it's still less egregious than uh, horse hair worms. I'm going to do, like, when I'm going, when we are going to do the insects, and I'm going to show you wholesome worms, you're going to be, you're going to be, to be disgusted. Like it's we, re it's really long. Like I cannot believe that something so long can live inside an organism without causing any harm. But yeah, we have a power mobile. Uh, it's just an amoeba. It's just an amoeba. Just an amoeba. Um, it's just an amoeba. Because uh, it's gel disease. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. If I, if I want, if I want more, uh, if it, like, it kills a fish, cool. <laughs> it kills a fish. <laughs> Why not? Uh, we have we have that thing. We have that thing, uh, which is the because it's the white spot disease. Guess why? Guess why uh, the, the the this organism. Because it's a disease called white spot disease upon the fact when it uh, lives on the scales of a fish and parasitizes it. I mean, it's how we it's, it's how we call it in French, amoeba. It's, it's amoeba. It's amoeba, amoeba. I don't know how to pronounce it in English. But yeah, white spot disease. Uh, guess why? Because uh, wouldn't that be because of a freaking. Uh, Wait spots. Yeah, names of disease are usually not that inventive, unless it's the name of a disease for plants. And in that case, uh, you can have everything, including a, uh, including a disease called broom rape, a parasite called broom rape. Are they meant to be eggs? No, those are colonies. Those are colonies. So each one of it, each one of these little white uh, white spots is a colony. Of the parasite, the parasite is first a proto mount, but then reproduces, becomes a tree mount, tri becomes a tree mount, adhere to the fish, adhere to the fish, and creates the spots. And you know that there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Reproduce, proto mount. Boom. And there's another really small, really, really small organism that's like really small and it goes uh, like holes, holes in the fish. So yeah, and yeah, it's really small, it's like a, like it's a protist, so it's one cell. It's about 10 micrometers, 
I mean, if we go like that, it's like 20 at most, 25 at most, 25 micrometers at most. But yeah, he, he, he causes like uh, those lesions on the fish. Isn't Brumite a plant? It is a plant. It is a parasite. It is a parasite of plants. It, that's why it is. Uh, it doesn't have any chlorophyll. That's why it's not green. Like it, it has a flower, but the, 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 the stem is not green because it doesn't have any chlorophyll. Because it doesn't need any chlorophyll. It doesn't need any. And uh, yeah, that was my last slide. That was my last slide. And because find, just finding these organisms, f finding these organisms uh, was pretty hard. It, they were pretty disconnected. They were pretty disconnected themselves. And unfortunately, that's, uh, that's pretty much the end. What an awful name for plants. I mean, it, it's exactly what it does. It can literally kill fields. It can literally kill fields. Which it parasitizes the, the roots of, of another plant. But yeah, that's uh, for a moment, that's uh, the parasite of, of fish that I, that I found. Like the, the families and, and all that. Yeah, they're pretty cute. They're pretty cute. I couldn't go for I couldn't go for my detail because there's like this this one worm. There's this one worm that goes into uh, Greenland charts. I really like Greenland charts. I like like uh, all all, those all the Greenland sharks live so long that uh, they've been parasitized parasitized by by this one worm on their eye. So they're all blind. Pretty much. So this parasite are sneaky motherfuckers. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, also the sea lice. I mean, there's some lice. Uh, there's some lices that, uh, that that can be found. That can be found in both like those. Those uh, there's a, like there's like like some of those they have like how do you say some cousins that also go on other crustaceans. Like crustaceans are weird. When you really look at the family in itself, crustaceans are really weird, especially with all the larval stages that do not look like the adults at all. Like, yeah, yeah, they're weird. They're super weird. They're going to get their own episode. Like crustaceans, they're going to have a multi-part episode because they're like, they're like fish. They're like, they're like you know, true fish. Like, they're like the, the raffin fish. Like, yeah, they're going to have their, their own episode because crustaceans are awesome. As much as they are terrifying. As much as they are terrifying. But yeah, I think... Uh, I think that's going to be it, unfortunately. 10 hours of research for that. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, crustaceans, get, they get weird. First of them being, like, the... the, the like... Like, the, like the, tongue, the tongue worm. Like, the tongue worm is a crustacean. It, it is weird to think about it is really weird to think about it's, uh, it's like yeah uh, it's hello it's like uh, hello I'm a crustacean like uh, like word says a close up of a worm it's not a worm I mean maybe my name but it's a crustacean it's not an annelid by any means it is not an annelid and yeah, I think that it, that it, uh, I think that it does conclude like this episode of Parasite Classes. This was a special uh, because I still need uh, like I still do I still need um, to prepare for Saturday because Saturday is going to be like such a bad time. It's going to be such a weird time, such a weird time, such a weird time. Because there is going to be the... There's, I, I, tr I will try to make it a 24 hour stream. I will try to make it a 24 hour stream. I don't know, if maybe, I can, maybe if I can make it only 12. If I can make it only 12, that would be nice. Because I am booked. And I can't really, I, I can't really like... Unbook, unbook myself. Except maybe for one thing. But it would allow me to sleep. That's how weird it is. That's how, that's how we are. Next is Lizard Man. Next is not Lizard Man. Next. Next. Oh, dang. What are you streaming on Saturday? Uh, I am streaming uh, the... Um, 
on Saturday, I am streaming for my 200 followers uh, celebration. What's with the blood on your avatar, by the way? Oh, I just put it there. It, it looked pretty. It, it, it just looked pretty. Don't you like it? You don't like it, that's right. You don't like it? Oh. You don't like it. But yeah, it just... Uh, but it looked pretty. But yeah, I, I'm, uh, I am uh, streaming my uh, 200 uh, followers celebration stream uh, on Saturday. <laughs> so I know that there's going to be a karaoke. I need to I need to preserve my voice for that. Which is going to be hard given the hours that I speak. Uh, I really, really would like... I mean, I, I do not have like... I did not I did not have had like the, the weeks that I can prepare myself for like an an anniversary stream. I need to prepare myself for my, for my anniversary too. You do like it? Oh, thank you. But yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a way for me to distinguish myself. I assume it was from cutting open the fish. <laughs> it's just that I put more and more of them. Uh, it's just that I put more and more of them. Uh, like uh, as as the stream progresses, as, as the week progresses, and I want to know if people actually like <laughs> actually uh, come and and find like see the differences. Uh, See the difference, but um, yeah, I, I know that there's going to be like a karaoke. I know that I, I'm going to open myself for Terraria Calamity. Head hurt after researching fish. Yeah, pretty much. And the voice, the voice hurts too. I don't know why. Like my voice is kind of fragile at the moment. Maybe it's because of Snoot Game. The ends have been like the bane of my voice. They have been the bane of my voice. That's how it works. I am not, I am not, like, I am very grateful to be able to, to do that. I am very grateful to be able to do that. And yeah, I think that I will open myself for Terraria, for Terraria Calamity servers, uh, trying to go out of hardcore and go as far as we can in, in that. There's going to be a karaoke. There's going to be a language exchange, uh, a language exchange se segment. That's for sure, because I already planned a collab at this point, so I know that um, I know that the, the, there is going to be a post for that for this language exchange because the collab was prepared before I obtained my 200 followers. At least Christ of the Nine is fully voiced. That is true. That is very true. I need to get myself Christ of the Nine. There is so many games that I need to take myself to take for myself, it's including Total War Warhammer, because the European copy is like. The European copies for the free games is like 25 euros only instead of, or instead of 154, which is really nice. It doesn't have the DLCs, but really nice. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tomorrow will be Skid Dualism. Uh, the day after tomorrow, we will continue with Darkwood. And uh, there's so many games that I need to play. So many games I need to play, so, so, so little money that I get. <laughs> so little money that I need to get, get for in order to acquire them. Also, I need to I get to, to get myself a new controller too. Like, I, I want to play Jackbox too. I want to play Jackbox. Like, I, I would really like to... There's a great sim there's a great sale on stream. Yeah. But I really want, uh, like Jackbox would be nice too because it will allow me to, to really play with the others and, you know, do turn by turn, turn by turn and all that. So yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I, I, tr I try to, I try to... I, tr I try to make it as nice as possible. I will try to make it as nice as possible in as little time as it will be. Like... I hope. I I really, 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 really hope that it, that it will be. Yeah, Jackbox would be so cool. I think that I would take like Jackbox free because there's like there was this game, this trivia game that I really liked. Uh, but I see I've seen Sayu you play it. But yeah, ja Jackbox would be really, really nice. I think that I, maybe I will take Jackbox because by the time I should be able to be able to play it a bit, play it, uh, have it, have it a bit. Yeah, class of 09 could be nice if, uh, if I eat ramen. Class of, class of 09 could be nice. Really nice. But I don't know, like, I've did a lot of VNs. 
So maybe we're going to wait for we're going to wait for a few more uh, few more things because I have uh, little goody two shoes. I have little goody sho uh, I have little goody two shoes that I want uh, to string to. And uh, what else? I also have this other one, which is. I mean, I have Fallout. Fallout, little goody two shoes that I need to finish. We have Fallout two. Uh, we have Baldur's Gate three. Uh, what else do we have? Library of Ruina, which will occupy most of my time. Not when I think about it. it. Will occupy a lot of my time. Stardew Valley. I mean, we did we did begin with Stardew Valley. We did begin. So there's a lot of there's a lot of things that I need to do. There's a lot of things I need to do. But for a moment, for a moment. I was glad that you were able to see the Parasite class. I am good again, the Parasite VTuber. I am the worm inside the brain of a girl and not the girl herself. And I bid you a very good day. Have a great day, everyone. The next, the next uh, Parasite class will be about colicons and lungfishes. And maybe, maybe also like uh, this, maybe the beginning of tetrapods. Maybe the very beginning of tetrapods. We'll see if I we'll see if I can have enough content for uh, lungfish and um, for, for for lungfish and, and other stuff. But maybe maybe we we will begin with tetrapods. And if we begin with tetrapods, you can believe that we will that we will uh, see the amphibians. You can believe that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, well. for a moment, I hope that you have a good rest. I hope that you really have a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow bye thank you thank you thank you for that thank you i it it's it's nice to it's nice to see that people are looking forward to my stream it's really nice thank you so much i i, I can't thank you enough i can't thank you enough